Hello, I'm Dennis and I welcome you in my tutorial series. In this video I'm going to create a primitive, but yet playable procedurally generated infinite terrain using map magic. Previously I have described the interface basics. Today I'm going to concentrate on the example workflow. I will create a series of nodes and say a couple of words of what they do, but won't dig deep into that detail. More advanced videos describing each node will follow. For now I'd like to show you how something could be done from scratch. It will take a couple of videos, so make yourselves comfortable. I start from an empty scene. Now create an empty graph asset. And double click it to open up the graph window. You can see that instead of the general button and the progress bar, there's a label saying that this graph isn't used anywhere in scene. It just has no frame to be generated with. So I will create a map magic object in a quick way by dragging the graph into the scene. Then I pin a grid of draft tiles. And in the middle I will use a full resolution terrain. I will start with one of the initial map nodes. This node will generate the map from scratch. The map is a two-dimensional array of floats. You can consider it as a height map, or you can consider it as a mask texture depending on the way you are going to use it. The most straightforward way to create some random map is using the noise node. It will create a Perlin of fractal noise pattern. To see the result noise node is producing, we've got to output it somehow and apply it to the terrain. Somehow we've got to say that this map should be used for, say, terrain height or terrain layer or grass mask. There is a group of nodes called outputs. They were designed to do that. For now we are going to output the noise map as a height, so we choose the height output from the list. Then we connect its input with the noise output. This way MapMagic will take the noise pattern generated here and assign it to the terrain here. You can see the noise map appeared at the terrain. Detailed in the center, but low resolution at the drafts. Note that the drafts have the same noise pattern. It just has a map smaller and not so detailed. The cool thing about MapMagic 2 is that it is independent from both tile resolution and terrain size. You can change that resolution, you can change the tile size, you can switch to drafts or back, it will still be the same pattern, each mountain or hollow will remain at its place. It will just change its detail level but not the overall shape. For now you might be wondering how to change the size of this noise pattern. And that's what the size property of the noise node is for. In the big picture, all the stuff determining how the generated result looks is set in the graph. MapMagic object just handles the technical stuff like tiles, infinite tiles, terrain settings or the resolution mentioned. So, by assigning the same graph in the other map magic object, OS Biome will give the same generated result. Intensity value changes the height or the noise pattern. But note that upon reaching some value it will be clumped. This happens because actually the noise map values range from 0 to 1. Let me open the preview and switch it to the grayscale mode. Here you can see the noise pattern ranges from the dark gray values. They should be 0.3 or something, up to 1. These wide areas is where the noise map reached the maximum and won't go any further. Actually, it's the height output who turns all of the map heights to world units. Here we've got 250. It means that the incoming values of 1 from the input will turn into 250 in world units. So if we want to raise the overall terrain level with all of the patterns, we raise this value. Ok, so we've got the perfect noise terrain, but unfortunately it's not enough to make it playable or look good. The next step we are going to take is to make mountain peaks and valleys between them. To do so we've got to raise all of the peak values or lower all of the lowlands. We'll use a curve node for that. Before I start editing the curve, I'd like to say a couple of words about what the curves are. 
Imagine a high mountain with more or less straight slope going from the zero level up to its stop at level 1. This slope will be the default linear curve. When we add a point and drag it down, we change the shape of this imaginary slope and all of the other slopes as well. Here we made a flat lowland and an inclined peak, and the same happened with all of the terrain. We can form a more advanced shape with the curve, and even make ravines or peaks or other stuff. But for now we just need a simple setup with the central point moved down. To create a point, click anywhere at the curve. To move the point, drag it with the mouse. You can create a point and start dragging. Just keep the mouse button pressed. To delete the point, drag anywhere away from the curve field. The first and the last points are draggable too. Now the terrain took one more step towards the realistic look, but still there's something is missing. The thing is the real terrain is undergoing some weathering changes. The rain washes it down, mud running from the mountains settled down in the sediment in the lowlands. That's what the erosion node does. There are plenty of properties, but for now I'd like to mention only one of them, the iterations count. The more the value, the more eroded terrain will be, however it will take more time to generate the terrain. Using the value more than 10 will noticeably slow down the terrain generation. I'll leave 3 here. Now the terrain looks far more realistic. It's a bit monotonous on a large scale, but each of the pieces looks fine. We've just used the four nodes, so I guess some uniformity is excusable. Now it's time to paint it with textures. We've used the height output to apply the height map data to the terrain. And we've got to use the other output to apply textures. It's called textures output. You can see it's absolutely empty. That's because we haven't added the texture layer yet. We can do this by pressing the add button. Here we can see the first layer appeared. With its icon, it's a checker since the layer is empty. And the name, I'll give a new one by clicking at the pencil icon. And the terrain layer slot, I will assign the one from the demo. Terrain layers are the standard Unity Terrain asset files, constructed from the Create menu. You can take a look at the Unity Terrain documentation to find more information about them. So, we've got our terrain filled with the demo grass. Let's add one more layer. Call it the cliff. Expand it with this arrow button and assign the bright cliff texture data. Nothing is happening because this layer isn't connected anywhere yet. Unlike the first layer, called background, this one has a map input. The background fills all of the terrain and each next layer lays a top of already existing layers blend the way it's done in Photoshop. As I already mentioned, any map could be treated not only as a height map, but as a mask. And now we'll be using the same mask I'm using for the terrain height as a mask for the cliff layer. A map is nothing more than a table of values ranging from 0 to 1. And here you can see that in places where these values are bigger, the terrain is higher too, as well as the amount of cliff texture added. And where these values are smaller, there are lowlands, and they have more background grass than the added cliff. I will make it a bit more contrast, just to emphasize it. I will add a contrast node. Here I will open up the preview to make it graphic. I raise the contrast value and you can see that the cliffs are placed high, while the grass is placed low. Now I want to reorganize the graph a bit. To do this, I'd like to introduce you a very special node that can help you to keep the graph neat and avoid creating long connections all over the graph that are hard to say where they have the origin or where they're ending. This node is called the portal. Two portal nodes, they do not generate anything. The only thing they do is just replace the link. Here we have a long connection that will be replaced. I create a new map portal. Map. Portal. Enter. It is the one that receives the data from the other nodes. I'll name it height since it will be connected to the same node the height output is linked to. And then I create an exit portal and choose the name I've just entered from the list. 
This will virtually link the exit portal to the HUD Enter one. So this way it is equivalent to the standard link, except you don't need to draw the link all over the graph, and you can always see where it is connected. And since we've already made the textures output independent from the height one, I will assign them in two different groups. This one will be for the heights, and it will be named accordingly. I'll add some color to make it more noticeable. Personally, I prefer to color all of the map related groups in blue, but it's just a matter of case. And this one will be for the textures. I'll rename it and paint it in blue. I'll place it under the height group for the convenience, to avoid stretching the graph deep into the right. Now we'll add one more layer. It will be the dark leaf. I plan to paint the mountain slopes with it, so I will be using the slope node as a mask. Here you can see the dark texture applied only to the inclined areas. To be more specific, it masks the area starting at 30 degrees and ending verticals, that is 90 degrees. I'll fiddle a bit with the starting value. Here you can see the slope texture starts from nearly horizontal planes. And here it lays only on the very inclined surfaces. But I liked the way it was looking by default. There's one more thing to mention when talking about layers. It's the layer's order. You can drag the layer the way the node itself could be dragged. Here I will switch cliffs, and you will see that the bright cliff is drawn over the dark one. Now the dark one is drawn atop. The layer draw order is determined by their place in the layered node. First, the background is drawn, then the dark cliff, and finally the bright one. Maybe using height mask cliff textures is a good idea, but I'd like to make something a bit more complex. So, I remove the node and disconnect the output. I'll use this bright cliff layer not only for the high areas, but for any sticking out parts. Some software like ZBrush or XNormal has a feature called Cavity Mask. Substance Designer's Curvature Map is a pretty similar. MapMagic also has a cavity node. Here you can choose whether it should highlight the convex areas, concave ones, or both the way it's done in ZBrush. Intensity value sets the overall strength of the mask, while smooth determines the detail level cavity node works on. Now I guess it's better to diversify all those green fields. We are going to use the cavity once more to do that, but now we'll use the concave mode. So let's add a new layer, name it, and assign the yellow layer set. We place this layer under the cliff layers, since it should be occluded by the cliff textures. Then we create a cavity node, and switch it to the concave mode. Here you can see the slight trace of a yellow grass appeared on the green areas. Let's make it a bit more noticeable. No, I mean a bit. Something like this. But it still lacks some contrast. Let's fix it with the contrast node you are already familiar with. This should be enough. Now I'm a bit tired of linking nodes, and excited to see what I've got from the player's perspective. So I add the character controller from the demo folder to the scene. Demo, character, char. I will place it here on the mountain slope. And run the play mode. Let me maximize the window. We've got a pretty terrain after all. It's a bare landscape yet, 
but there's already something Icelandic about it. For me, this terrain lacks grass. I mean, not the grassland textures, but those grass blades made with vertical planes. Let's fix it with the grass output. Map Outputs Grass I will be using the demo sedge texture and the billboard mode. You might notice these outputs at the texture layers. These are the normalized masks as they appear on the terrain. If we use this output from the background layer, it will grow the grass only where the green texture is used. You can see the grass here, but not on the cliffs. Mainly not on the cliffs, I'll fix it later. So let me set the grass up a bit. First of all, I'll increase the grass width and lower its height a bit. As the grass settings in the default Unity terrain, the width and height are random and lay within the minimum and maximum values, so I have to change both. Then I rest the density. This should be enough. None colors. I'll take the terrain colors and make them way brighter. And increase the noise to diversify it a bit. Actually, all of those settings are a duplicate of the standard Unity Detail prototype. Now we have a grass growing on all of the green texture. But the problem is that the yellow texture should have a grass growing too. But, except of some separate bush in the place where the green texture mask is blended, there's no grass growing. Here's an idea of how to fix it. What if we could make a combined mask map of the yellow and green grass? Just take a green grass mask and add the yellow mask to it. And that's what the blend node is for. It can combine, multiply, subtract, and other way mix several masks. Here is where you can set the blend mode. For now we just need to add one mask to another. So I'll leave the add mode for all, and it will plus this mask values to the other one. Blend layers could be added, removed, and organized the way it's done in the textures output. Yes, this seems much better. Now the grass is looking like it should, except the one thing. It's growing in the places where the cliff texture is mixed with the grass. We should remove those grass bushes from here. What if we could make a grass mask more contrast, removing the smooth transitions from 0 to 1, as well as all of the half values? The preview is a great tool that will help us to set up the contrast node. I will apply to terrain. Here you can see the transition between the cliff and the grass shown with the yellow color. I've got to remove it by making it red. Raising the contrast. Lower the intensity a bit to free the areas that have any cliffs from the grass completely. Now, let's see what we've got. Some more adjustments. I'll raise the density a bit. And 
and then lower its height. So let's see what we finally got by starting the play mode. Okay, the grass seems to be looking fine. Now I'd like to see how far can I travel, and to see the overall terrain by the way. So we'll fly in one direction, just to see if I can reach the end of the world. Now let me elevate just to see the new chunks appearing. Here you can see the draft terrains, which are replaced with the full resolution ones as I come closer. So, we've got a nice terrain to play with. It looks rather barren, but I guess it's excusable since we haven't added objects yet. And that's what we are going to do in the next tutorial. Probably I won't be using this setup exactly to demonstrate the objects but surely it will be something similar. You can find the resulting terrain in the demo folder included with MapMagic, so feel free to fiddle with it or use as a reference. Good luck with your MapMagic experiments. Thanks for watching. Bye.